all week long. We have been chatting with the candidates for selectmen who are going to be asking you, the Fairhaven voters, to consider them this Monday. And today, we welcome the current selectman, Jeff Howard, to the microphone. Jeff, good morning. Good morning, Phil, and thanks for having me on this morning. It's a pleasure. It really is. Is it? Uh, does the time pass quickly that uh, the election is here all of a sudden again? <laughs> it feels like it was just yesterday. I was in here talking to you as I was running for my first time as a selectman. How, how long ago was that? Three years ago. Three years ago. And uh, for folks who don't know you, uh, everyone knows you, tell, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and over these last three years, some of your accomplishments, Jeff. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I grew up in Fairhaven. I've lived here my entire life. Um, I went K-12 through 12 through the Fairhaven school system. Um, I was actually a student of the Rogers School, and we know Rogers School is one of the major issues right now. And I'm the only sitting selectman that actually went to that school. Um, I own a small business here in town. I've owned my business almost 20 years now. It seems like uh, that was just yesterday when I started that when I was coming out of high school. Um, my business is here in town, and of course I have a lovely 12-year-old daughter who attends the Hastings Middle School, and uh, she loves it here in town. And one of the reasons I run for selectmen is I want to keep this town a family town, a town that you want to live in, you want to grow up in, and just like I did. And, and I've enjoyed every minute of being a selectman in town, and I love what I do. Three years. Uh, what can you say are some of uh, the accomplishments and achievements that you've helped bring about? Well, I can say proudly that three years ago when I was in here and when I was running for office, I w I've managed to live up to everything I said I would do. Um, the town now has its capital planning committee. The town now has an economic development committee that I want to talk about a little later with you. Um, we're an open board. We've become, we listen to the residents. And that was one of the major reasons I ran is because it felt like the select board before I was on was unapproachable. And I ran on a platform of approachability, availability. If you call me up, I'm going to answer the phone. We may not always agree, mm -hmm. but I'm going to listen to what you have to say, and I'm going to act and do the right thing. And not necessarily because I'm, you're connected or because you're well known. It's because you have an issue and you deserve a select that listens to you. And that was one of the most important things to me when I ran. And I've made sure I've looked up to that. Is there transparency? I guess that's what you're referring to. Transparency is, is unbelievable now what we have for transparency. All the documents are going online. We've put together as a board, and, and that's the key right here, a cohesive board. Um, not one selectman, but three selectmen working together. We've put together written policy and procedure manuals. Um, we've made sure that uh, we have public um, input meetings, not just make decisions in, in the back room, you know, or 12 o'clock in the afternoon meetings where nobody knows what's going on. We make sure the important issues are out there in the public and we listen to what the public has to say, and that is important. You were just mentioning a committee, but what about this committee that you want to bring up? Well, the Economic Development Committee yeah. is, is very important to me. Um, it was actually, believe it or not, the town had one way back in the 60s, um, but it has been, it's been defunct for many, many years. Um, after some research, we found, um, we found that town meeting had voted to have this committee. And one of the important issues with me is all these buildings in town, the Shaw Supermarket, along the Route 6 stretch, we have business after business closing up, and nobody's coming back to reuse these buildings to, to revamp this business district. This committee will actually um, re work to revamp the, the business district, and I think that um, it's, it's one of the next big issues in town. Who would the committee consist of? We've already put the committee together. Um, the committee com consists of myself as a selectman rep, the town administrator, the planning director, a representative from the planning board, um, three citizens from the community. I believe we've chosen Ms. McLaughlin from the shipyard, uh, Ms. McGregor, who owns a uh, Eastern Tanks, and uh, Mr. C, who's an, a local attorney. Uh, during the week, I've had uh, folks who are running for your position on and they gave us their opinion about what the, the most important issues for Fairhaven, you know, what you face here as a community. How would you list some of the priorities? What are some of the important issues in Jeff Howarth's mind? Well, we know one of the biggest things that's been going on in town that, that everybody knows about is the government transition. Yes. For many, many years we had the executive secretary type of biz, uh, government, form of government. We've now gone to a town administrator form of government. And it's been a smooth transition. And that smooth transition's um, been taking place because of, again, being a cohesive board, working together, working with the new TA, 
to move Fairhaven in the next direction. You know, we've gone from uh, a daily management by the Board of Selectmen to daily management by a town administrator. So it's been a change on the Board of Selectmen. But we've been there, and myself, I've been there since day one as the chairman, as he was hired, and I've worked with, with um, Mark Reese since the day he came to the door, and uh, I love working with him. And uh, one of the things that there's been some talk about his contract and, and how much money he's making, I think it's important to understand that he's got a, he's got a very fair contract, and for the type of skill set that he has, he actually deserves actually probably slightly more money than we were able to give him. But, um, so, and he's done an excellent job. Um, this year's budget, uh, once again, um, we've had a budget this year that is uh, balanced. All the needs of the community are being met, and we're not exceeding our revenues. So we're staying well within the budget, and that's important because um, three years ago when I ran, the budget was not balanced whatsoever. They there were layoffs. They were they were they were cutting they were cutting department budgets. Now all department budgets are funded. We we're able to fund the school department um, at three and a half percent with uh, six hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. Um, additional going to the schools this year. We were able to fund an additional firefighter uh, last year. Um, we, we put on th uh, four new police officers in the last year, some through attrition, and one to replace a position that was laid off in um, 2008 or 2009. Mm -hmm. What other issues? So you, you have an economic uh, view of filling up the stores, you were just talking about uh, the transition, anything else? Oh, definitely. Um, we were able to restructure town government with, with, the, um, with the, t t the town administrator. Um, but now we still have a lot of policy and procedure um, in, in, that is all messed up, basically. It's all over the place, obsolete. Um, and, it, and we need to put together a charter committee. And, and in my next three years, one of the things I'll do is put together a charter committee. And I'd ask the board to, to make me the representative. And this charter committee will basically take the town bylaws and revamp them. Because like anything, you know, after a while, Things get crossed, and, and, and it's just a whole big obsolete mess that needs to be addressed, and that'll really bring the town into into the next century. Uh, you've uh, touted yourself as being accessible and somebody who listens to what your constituents, what the voters have to say. What are they saying, Jeff? Um, the vote. The voters want to be heard. That they, they, they felt they feel sometimes, um, especially when I ran the first time, they felt government wasn't accessible, and they want accessible government. And one of the things, you know. In the last couple of years, and especially this last year as chairman, we had a big issue, for example, in West Island with some fishing piers. Um, the state had, had offered us some $25,000 in grant money. They were going to build some fishing piers along Causeway Road. Sounded like a great idea, but it included no safety improvements. But I don't live down on West Island, so the, I relied on the residents. 140 residents came to me with a petition and said, Jeff, this is why we can't do this. Not only did I listen to them, but I acted, and I stopped the state from putting the piers in for now. We're looking at other locations of possibly putting them. But had I not listened to the residents, we would, we would have put those fishing piers there and created another safety issue on the causeway. Uh, running for re-election on the select board in Fairhaven, Jeff Howarth joining me this morning. How did last night's final candidates night go? Uh, very well. Um, I love West Island. Getting down on the West Island, um, I think we all look forward, whenever we're running for public office in Fairhaven, to candidates night on West Island. Um, it's, it's not only the good food and, and stuff down there, but it's just the atmosphere. Um, and it's a little bit of a free-for-all. Anybody in the audience can just jump up and ask you whatever. So it's very hard to prepare, but part of doing this job is, is being able to stand by what you've done and, and what you want to do. And uh, West Island tests you for that, and I, and I love doing that. What would the uh, voters say is of most concern to them? Well, right now, I, I think um, what, some of the, one of the biggest concerns in town is the, the transition of the school buildings, the reuse of the school buildings. You know, the problem we have with school buildings in this town, the Rogers School and the Oxford School, is not only do we have obsolete buildings, but we have obsolete buildings that haven't been maintained in 25, 30 years. It's easy to repurpose a building that is just old. But when the building is old and falling apart, it's not so easy to just repurpose it. Thankfully, we we found someone that, that wants to do that with the Oxford School. We have free proposals for the Rogers School. We're working through them. They're only lukewarm proposals. They're not. They're not guaranteed cemented proposals. We're trying to find the right fit for the neighborhoods. So you know, and no matter what decision you make, so, you know, you get two different opinions. So you upset some people with them. But we're trying to do what we think is best for the community as a whole with those projects. And uh, pollution has come up as one of the topics, whether it's in the water or whether it's at the super site. 
your concerns about the local issue there? Well, one of the things is, as you know, um, I was on the Board of Public Works for five years. I was a chairman over there for three and a half. And um, the sewer treatment plant um, does put a lot of nitrogen into the harbor. And I, I know that that's um, one of the things that the EPA has said they wanted to address. We've been waiting since long before I was on that board, and we're still waiting to see what the mandates are going to come from from the state and from the EPA on nitrogen into the harbor from the sewer treatment plant. When that does happen, it's going to be a $20, $30 million um, fee, and the town's going to have to work with our sewer rate payers to, to foot that bill. How is uh, new tax money going to come into the town of Fairhaven? Well, one, economic development. If we start getting these buildings repaired <coughs> stuff from the Economic Development Committee, we're, we're going to take in some new money. Um, one of the other things people may not realize is, um, and it's a little bit controversial with some people, the marijuana uh, facility that's coming into town is actually going to turn back 2% of its profit to the community. So we'll be getting some new tax money there. Obviously, we have normal growth um, that will that'll bring in um, revenue. So, so the, town is, the town fiscally, we're in great shape. Um, we're probably in the best shape we've been in in 10 years. What questions did I not ask you that you would like to address? Um, no, I'd just like to, to tell the voters that I'm, I'm, I'm the best candidate for the job, in my opinion. I'm, I'm young, I'm energetic, I'm, I'm in, not at the end of my career or the beginning, I'm right in the middle of my career. Um, I'm a small business owner, so I'm, I'm very business-minded. The, the town is a business. At the end of the day, you have to run it like a business. I don't have conflicts um, with, with, with being a selectman. Um, one, one of the candidates running against me has a brother who's on the fire department. And that's not a bad thing whatsoever. But what it does is it prevents him from being able to participate. Mr. Freitas can't participate in anything to do with the fire department um, or the emergency, me um, emergency medical service because of the state law, uh, state conflict of interest law. So that's, that's a multi-million dollar budget that he'll be excluded from uh, um, acting on in any personnel or, or policy decisions with that. So I, I worry about that. You know, Mr. Rogers, he, he was a long-term superintendent, not a bad thing, you know, but he'll be excluded from voting on anything to do with pensions because he's currently on the, getting, receiving a large pension from the town and he can't vote on pensions. Um, I'm the only candidate that hasn't been a town employee. I was a call firefighter back in the day, but I haven't received a weekly paycheck from the town. Um, I'm really, truly independent. I, I really, I've kept myself out of the good old boy network, as they call it, Fairhaven, or the old time Fairhaven politics. I really care about everybody. Uh, I'm not here for myself, I'm here for the community. And I think that sets me apart. I've done the job for the last three years. I hope I've proven myself. I think I have proven myself to the community. I've proven that the community is my focus, not my personal agenda. Good luck on Monday. Election Day, for those of you here in Fairhaven listening, and for other communities around here. And uh, Jeff Howard, we appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much for having me, Phil. Absolutely. Uh, we'll be right back. Don't go away, folks.